guys. Um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist and today I wanted to do a little video on the subject of microvascular angina. Uh, my friend Jilly from the internet um, asked me to do a little video on microvascular angina. So here it is. All right. So the first thing to try and understand is what is angina. And there's a lot of sort of, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. So I thought I'd get a little model out here and talk you through angina. All right. So that you understand it. And then we'll talk about microvascular angina and see um, and tell you what it means. So the first thing to say is, this is your heart here. This is how the heart looks, all right? Now, if I cut the heart, just so that you can see a cross section, you will see that it consists of these chambers. So there's one chamber here, that's called the left ventricle. There's another chamber here, which is called the right ventricle, yeah? And this is the, so basically, this is the left atrium here. This is your mitral valve. This is the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle, this is the tricuspid valve. And then, so basically, this is the most important chamber when it comes to heart attacks, etc. all right? Because this is doing all the work of pumping blood out through this tube, the aorta, all around the body, okay? So, this muscle needs blood, all right? And it is, um, logical to say that if this muscle is working harder then it needs more blood all right now the blood is supplied a lot of people don't understand this but basically when this muscle pumps it pumps blood out okay and it goes through here from here it can go to the brain but also from down here it goes to the rest of the body but look over here you see just here um you'll see just that see that little hole that's a little hole that comes from this vessel and it actually supplies the heart muscle itself through the, these vessels so sorry so these vessels here okay yeah here we go so so the blood comes out and then from a little side branch over here two side branches the blood comes down these blood vessels, all right? The, the red, can you see the red? So this is your left coronary artery, this is your right coronary artery, okay? And you can see these blood vessels supply different parts of the heart, all right? And the blood vessel breaks into branches, which go into smaller branches, another branch there, another branch there, and lots and lots of branches all over. And But by doing so, the heart is then supplied with blood, okay? So although it is pumping blood out, it also needs blood itself to keep going, and that blood comes through these small blood vessels. And these blood vessels, the red ones, are called the coronary arteries, all right? So angina is basically when the heart is working harder, when the muscle is asking for more blood, all right, and it is not getting as much blood as it's asking for. That's basically what angina is. It's a demand supply mismatch. So the heart is doing more, therefore it needs more blood, and the blood isn't coming down and supplying that muscle quick enough, all right? So that could be for a variety of reasons. You could just be short of blood. If there's no blood, okay, if you're anemic, if you have a very, very low hemoglobin, then you would get angina, because the heart is asking for more blood. There is no more blood because you've lost the blood or you're anemic. And therefore uh, the heart will, the muscle will start suffocating because it doesn't have the blood and it will start aching. And the ache is manifested as a discomfort across the chest, like a tight band. It's not a pain. It's usually a tight, heavy band. And a lot of people say, oh, look, it feels like someone's sitting on my chest. And usually most people will say this when they're exerting themselves because uh, it is during exertion that they're asking the heart to do more. The heart is doing a lot more when you're exerting yourself. Therefore, it's going to want more blood. And that is the first time you start noticing it. Uh, uh, the symptoms which are signs or which are a symptom of a lack of blood to this heart muscle. All right. Now, so, of course, if you don't have any blood, then that could cause angina. 
What about if you had a narrowing or these blood vessels were third up? Okay, that is the most common uh, form of uh, common cause of angina. People, um, you know, the modern lifestyle, smoking, high cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure, they all cause these uh, plaque to build up in these blood vessels. And when the blood vessels start um, getting narrowed, the blood can't go th through quick enough. And that is, again, first noticeable when, um, when um, people are exerting themselves. So usually, um, you know, when someone comes to me and says, I'm fine at rest, I start exerting myself, I get a discomfort in my chest, I think to myself, oh, that sounds like angina, that's angina to me. And then they say, well, we stop, we stop doing what we're doing, our heart rate comes down, discomfort goes away. To me, that's angina. Uh, and then usually what I like to do is to try and work out whether they have any heart artery narrowings uh, which are causing the angina. Because if they have a heart artery narrowing, then that's something uh, that's serious because the heart artery narrowing could get worse. Uh, secondly, if the heart artery narrowing got so worse that it blocked, um, it blocked completely, then that area of the heart which is expecting all this blood through this vessel will not get the blood it needs and therefore it will die. And that process where the heart becomes devoid of blood for a prolonged period of time and starts dying is called a heart attack. All right. So, you know, when someone complains of angina, you worry that they may have a significant narrowing and you want to know um, how bad this narrowing is and whether it can be fixed because you don't want to get into a situation where the narrowing gets so bad that the heart muscle starts dying because that's obviously very dangerous once the heart muscle starts dying you don't you can't get it back and eventually your pumping function of the heart will get impaired and the heart will start failing so so if someone comes to me and complains of angina uh, what I like to do is send them for a test called an angiogram. And an angiogram is where um, someone will feel a wrist, uh, pulse in your wrist or in the groin, and they puncture the, they puncture the vessel in the groin or in the wrist. Okay? Because it's an artery that they're puncturing, because it has a pulse, we know that all arteries will eventually feed into this big artery here. So basically what happens is we puncture the wrist, all right, and we pass through the needle, so we puncture it, uh, blood starts coming out of the other side of the needle, through that we pass a wire, okay, the wire goes up, 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 all this way, comes in there, okay, comes into this blood vessel, and then you go down, you go down, and then once you are here, you try and put the wire in, or put, uh, over the wire you slide a tube, Okay, and then you take the wire out, and then with the tube, you try and go into this bit here. I don't know whether it shows. See this little red dot here? Because that directly leads into the heart artery here. Okay, that little red dot is where this leads into this. And then once you're in there, you can inject some dye, and that dye will show up whether you have any heart artery narrowings. All right? Uh, so that that is the process of angiography okay that's what an angiogram tells you why is it important because remember if you have a heart artery here a heart artery narrowing here right at the top then all this area because all this area is not going to get the blood it needs all right whereas if you have a heart artery narrowing right down there then that's not so serious because it's only supplying a small part See, all this part, the tributaries have already gone off. So you can get blood to all this area, but if the narrowing is there, there's only a small part of the heart that isn't getting the blood it needs. Now, the thing is, an angiogram is very good in the sense that it'll show up the big vessels. It'll show up this vessel. It might show up these side branches, but it's not going to show up the very, very small vessels because... Um, the resolution is not good enough and you will not necessarily see the tiny vessels. So there is a subgroup of patients who complain of typical angina, chest discomfort, which gets worse with exercise, which gets better with rest. To all intents and purposes, they have angina, but you do an angiogram and actually you find that the heart arteries are okay on the angiogram. 
And therefore, then you are in a dilemma because how do you explain the patient's symptoms? And a lot of people then put their symptoms down to something called microvascular angina, which is that only the small vessels are probably narrowed, but the big vessels that they can actually see on the angiogram are unnarrowed. Ultimately, even if a small part of the heart isn't getting blood, it will ache and that will manifest as a discomfort across the chest. The fact is, so it doesn't really matter whether it's a big part of the heart muscle or a small part of the heart muscle, pain is pain. Suffocation, if a bit of the heart hurts, you'll feel the same kind of discomfort. The um, point, however, is that if it's only a very tiny part, a tiny vessel that is narrowed, then that part of the heart muscle, uh, even if it does get affected, even if it dies, you lose a very, very tiny part of the heart muscle and it should not threaten your life. The whole issue is the larger the area of damage, the more likely it can, the more, more dangerous it becomes. But if it's a very, very tiny spot, it can still ache, but may not cause um, a huge amount of damage if it blocks off anyway. So for a lot of people, they're left with this diagnosis of microvascular angina. And then they say, well, what do we do about it? You know, we've got this microvascular angina. We can't um, lead a normal life because every time we try and exert ourselves, we get discomfort. Unfortunately, there are no real good treatments for this. Uh, you can't um, categorically diagnose it because the vessels are so small. One thing you can do to diagnose it is to do a perfusion scan, which is uh, somewhere, which is a test where you um, give the patient some radioactive dye. The radioactive dye goes where the blood goes. Um, and then you take a picture of that. Then you put the patient on a treadmill, make them work really hard. If they get the discomfort, you give them more dye. And then the dye should go where the blood goes. And if you see an area where the dye isn't going when the patient is complaining of discomfort on exertion, but it is going when the patient is at rest, then you can assume that that part of the heart muscle isn't getting the blood it needs. Okay. If you get, if you see that, and you know that the heart arteries on angiography are normal, then you can diagnose microvascular angina. Um, these vessels are too small to put stents in. They're too small to put bypasses on. So usually the treatment has to be with tablets. Often for these patients, the spray, the nitrolingual spray helps because the nitrolingual spray opens up all blood vessels temporarily and therefore improves blood flow to the muscle. Um, sometimes uh, these patients benefit from things like uh, calcium antagonists, diltiazem, tildium, uh, or even beta blockers. Um, and some people then get to put on oral nitrates like the nitrolingual spray, but in a tablet form, isosorbide mononitrate. And finally, there is a new tablet now available called Ronolazine, uh, which is very effective and can help in patients who have microvascular angina. Um, so the first thing when you've got this continuous discomfort is to be confident that it's not going to cause you a huge amount of harm, particularly if you've had an angiogram and that is normal. Uh, the second thing to understand is that it does cause... Uh, it, it, the second thing to say is that the spray will help. Uh, the third thing to spray is that the third thing to say is that exercise is always good because exercise encourages, you know, um, uh, and growth of blood vessels. Uh, so exercise is generally good. Uh, finally, there are medications, things like ronolazine, which can help. All right. Uh, Eventually, if things don't help, it's always worth going and seeing if your GP can refer you to a refractory angina clinic uh, where they have some uh, rather fancy things which they can sometimes help, that can sometimes help. These can include sort of spinal cord stimulators uh, which can help control the pain. So they're not actually doing anything to the heart, they're just controlling the pain associated with it. Okay. It's always worth, always worth, if you are diagnosed with microvascular angina, it's always worth also just querying as to whether it really is microvascular angina or could the discomfort be coming from somewhere else. In particular, in women, it could be coming from the gallbladder. That could cause very similar discomfort. In men, it can be caused, caused by the stomach and the hiatus hernia can cause discomfort, which can be similar to this. So it's always worth going and seeing a gastroenterologist as well, just in case 
your symptoms are not due to microvascular angina. So whilst it can be a bit of a pain to have it and it can be difficult to treat, it is not, it is not dangerous and therefore you should feel reassured that you're not in any danger and actually having a normal coronary angiogram is a really reassuring thing. So I hope this was useful um, um, and if you like this video please consider subscribing. I'll put a link on at the end of this video for all um, my links, I, my website which is www.yorkcardiology.co.uk. You can send me a message on that website and I try and answer all my messages. Similarly, you can go and join my Facebook page if you feel the need to. Um, and that is, um, um, I, now what is it? If you type in yourcardiology at gmail.com, that'll bring up my Facebook page. Thank you so much. All the best.